Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm, as always, really excited. I've got someone else here with me today, and it's super exciting uh, to have Donna here today because she has lived with and fully recovered from ME-CFS. And not only that, since her recovery, she's also faced COVID-19, so she's going to be sharing some of her experience with that as well. So welcome, Donna. It's really Hello. awesome to have you here. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, and no, I'm really excited to be doing this. Yeah, and um, you've kind of like helped me through my journey. So for me to be able to like share it and share how you've helped me for other people, it's, it's yeah, it's amazing. That's always obviously really nice to hear, but always a bit bizarre too, because it, it feels a bit strange because I, you know, I put this stuff out and I do these things, but I have no idea who it's reaching or, you know, if it's helpful at all. So that's, that's really nice to hear. So where are you in the world right now? Where, um, yeah, where are um, you? In Portsmouth in England so it's like right on the south coast of uh, the UK um, okay. yeah, so in... yeah let's just you know, dive right in can you take us back to you know, a bit of your journey you know how it all began yeah, and what yeah, things were looking like before that yeah of course so um, I when I was growing up um, I have always been on a health and fitness journey and um, so I, when I was a teenager, I was quite overweight and I always wanted to lose weight. I always wanted to push and push and push to get the, the perfect body as such. Um, so I've always exercised um, throughout my life. It's been part of my life, part of um, my journey um, in regards to where my body was to how my body is now. But obviously along the way, there was a lot of hurdles and uh, got me to having chronic fatigue syndrome and complete burnout. Um, I was always sporty. Um, a lot of people with this condition tend to really be into kind of that, that A-type personality, don't they? Where they just want to keep pushing and whether it be work, whether it be exercise, education, it's, you know, we, we never stop. We don't have a stop button as such. Um, so yeah, I was always kind of into my fitness. Um, I would, just live a, a kind of busy lifestyle. I was in a sales job um, and I then got into running and was doing sort of runs, um, so, you know, 10Ks and then 10 miles, then half marathons and then full marathons. Um, mm. And looking back now, I just literally never rested at all. It was kind of rest was seen as weak um and you know train harder and you know eat less as well it was always just kind of real imbalance of the two um yeah so and with like my general lifestyle I was pretty what I thought was always aspiring to be healthy um suffered with like the the sort of usual things that people suffer with so you've got like your you know your IBS the slight anxiety especially growing up in a larger body um a lot of people had an opinion about how I looked so I was always aspiring to be slimmer um and yeah like I say I would just push and push and push really um until I started to get a little bit unwell it's, yeah, it's really interesting listening to you explain all of this, and I can relate to some of it, but it's 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 unfortunate. It's almost like punishment for good behavior. And I think a lot of us, I know when I was younger, I had a similar mentality towards health and fitness. And I think I thought I was pretty healthy because I worked out a lot and I stressed over my diet every single day. And quite mm -hmm. often I was writing down every molecule of food that I was eating and counting calories. And, you know, so my idea of health was that I pushed myself to the extreme every single day at the gym and then stressed over every bite of food that I ate. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. somehow this meant that I was like, I was killing it. Like I was really a healthy person. <laughs> I, I kind of say that um, I was so obsessed with being healthy that actually made me unhealthy. Um, yeah. Because like, it was just... It's kind of that like that textbook thing, isn't it? With like diet, nutrition and exercise. Um, it's like to the textbook I was doing it. Um, I was eating all the right things. I was cutting out, you know, any sort of toxic food as such. Um, I was doing all the cardio. I got told actually when I was younger, when I was a teenager going through like um, a lot of like the, the sort of turmoil of my weight loss. Um, I got told by doctors to just do lots of cardio and eat loads of like carbs, eat loads of sugar. And one doctor said to me growing up, you're never going to get the body you want unless you have liposuction. And it, it was just for a teenager to hear that, it, that was just, yeah, real kind of 
impact on my mental health as such because it was just kind of and I, I just wanted to prove them wrong I'm one of those people if someone says I can't do something I'm like yeah I can and I'm gonna pretty much burn myself out until I get there <laughs> oh that just gave me goosebumps it's so hard being a teenager as it is or at least it was for me I think it's a tough time for most of us and just thinking about having a doctor someone who you look up to and someone who you trust to tell you something like that you know I, I don't ever mean to bash on doctors or you know shame them and I think they're doing the best they can with the knowledge that they have but the unfortunate thing is that they're in such a position of power that you know these situations aren't handled well especially with youth um yeah, yeah. And I mean, we're talking about in the 90s here. So nutrition education was nowhere near what it's like now. Um, yeah. You know, you had like the typical food pyramid and, you know, it was just uh, going back, looking at that kind of um, information, you know, doing lots of cardio and eating more carbs. My body type actually is better from lifting weights and eating a little bit more of the fats, you know, the essential fats. But you're just uneducated and nutrition wasn't a, a key thing back there it was just kind of take these tablets take these supplements to help you lose weight um and then I think looking at my journey of CFS a lot of it was the the emotional stress as well as the physical and, and doing stress mm -hmm. as well so I've had to work on that a lot um on my recovery for sure so it sounds like all of this was creating a kind of a perfect storm for you in your life, you know, of things about to implode. So so what happened? Did, did your health start declining gradually or was it kind of an overnight thing that you were suddenly just not well? What did that what did that look like? So I was calling it like little red flags um, and I would just be so tired, like so tired. And it was 2015, I turned 30 and we were going to Ibiza and I, you know, I was turning 30. I wanted the per you know that that again perfect body I wanted the bikini body I was got to the point very similar to your journey um training a couple times a day you know eating a silly restrictive amount of calories considering what I was doing but I was also a personal trainer and I was doing massage sports massage as my job as well so not only was I exercising I was doing a physical job and I was just getting tired and tired and tired um I thought I was having hormonal issues because I was getting, you know, night sweats, I was getting aches and pains, irregular periods, I was um, getting like the nerve pains and muscle aches and I just thought, oh, why am I getting this? Like, I should be able to do this job, I should be able to mm -hmm. exercise. Um, and then I, again, I just kept going. I went to a couple of homeopath uh, people because doctors didn't really know much. I was having well, first of all, I went to like homeopaths because I was just trying to look for an alternative therapy because I was into my nutrition and everything. And they warned me. They said, look, if you don't calm down, you're going to get ME. And I was like, no, 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 I'm healthy. I'm healthy. I'm doing all the right things. I'll be fine, you know. Um, and then it was 2017. I was going to bed one night and my glands flared up and like all like my throat, around my head, all around here under my armpits um, and then I had some blood tests it turns out I had I had had glandular fever so okay. it was really bizarre um my body kind of over over kind of rided it really um and I didn't rest I'm self-employed I think I had two three days off of being a bit poorly and then I started to book clients in and I, I felt awful it then turned into the Epsom Bar virus um and again further tests and blood tests showed I was having issues with my liver and also my spleen and it's just I was just so stressed obviously IBS was all over the place anxiety panic attacks and it wasn't till my actual diagnosis which was 2019 about September 2019 that I actually was relieved because I thought I was going mad I thought what is wrong with me you know and I had spent two years trying to recover but I was just you know in between clients I would have to put in my diary you know nap so I'd wake up in the morning do a client go home to bed wake up have a shower do another client sit on the sofa get out again and that was my life I was just wasting it just sleeping <laughs> yeah Wow, there's there's a lot to unpack there. There's a couple of things that stood out to me. One is how, you know, it 
I empathize with the, you know, kind of being in that, I don't want to call it in between, but well, you can kind of function and you can kind of work, but it's really, really difficult. And I think on the surface, it can look like, oh, well, maybe it's actually not that bad. You're still able to do this and that. But I would imagine your experience with something like mine, that every single day was such a struggle. And it was like this battle to get through. And you have to be so careful. And those naps are mandatory. And what if something like throws a wrench in your day and you're not going to be able to get it? It's like, I can't just push through. Like, there's no way around this. So mm. it's, it, it creates a really stressful existence, I would imagine. That was my experience anyways. Definitely. And I was just trying to even I, I remember a couple of times before like my evening clients and I'm sorry to my clients because I would always show up <laughs> and I, would yeah. always, I used to call it my mask. I would put this my makeup on, put my mask on, get to my client, do it. But inside, I just wanted to sit on the floor and just kind of just go to sleep or my body would be aching so much or I'd be having a panic attack and I, but I would just smile and just carry on. But with every panic attack that happened, because I didn't let it happen, I would go home and it felt like I'd run a marathon. So it was that emotional kind of strain. But I do remember one day I was sat um, downstairs in my, my living room and my other half come home and I was just crying. I was like, I can't go to my client. Like, But then again, it's that strain of being self-employed. And you know, and then people would look at me and go, oh, you look a bit tired. And I'd be like, oh, God. <laughs> but, yeah, the, you know, quality of sleep was terrible. It's always been terrible up until my kind of when I found out and then started to key into my recovery. Yeah, it's just, I think for me, it felt like trying to get through life while being in quicksand. It just felt like the whole time I was working, it was like the earth was trying to suck me down and it took every ounce of my energy just keeping myself you know above ground never mind everything else the other thing I just before we move on I just quickly really have to circle back to you because I've never heard this before <laughs> is that uh, someone actually said to you it was uh, I don't recall who you said a doctor be careful or you're going to get ME I, I didn't think that there was that level of awareness you said that was what 2017 yeah so it's a homeopath so the doctors weren't really oh, yeah, okay. yeah so it was more of the um like holistic therapy yeah yeah two of them tell me um and I didn't really know much about it and I was just like no I'll be fine you know I had like they said my breathing was really shallow and um because I wasn't really into yoga back then um it wasn't till I started yoga that my panic attacks kind of eased because I'd use the, the breath work um and it just kind of it opened my eyes a bit but I just still kept going and this is a really funny thing because like all of like the nausea you get when you push yourself too much and and again mm -hmm. I thought it was hormonal issues but I would probably do a pregnancy test every couple of months because I thought why do I feel so horrendous <laughs> like there's got to be something wrong so I was getting in pregnancy tests and you know and but obviously I wasn't pregnant but I just thought nothing can feel worse than this <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can't even imagine the emotional roller coaster in all of that that you're dealing with. And then throw on these thoughts of all the time. I'm like, am I having a baby? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't even imagine. Wow. So what happened? Did it just keep going like this or did it yeah. sort of drop off? Like, what did your journey look right, like? It kept going, going. And I kept having blood tests. And my white blood cells were quite low. So I was always um, like fighting an infection. And um, I went, I found like, you know, you just find this one doctor, don't you? And she was just, I think you you have got ME and, and CFS. And she said, have you heard about it before? And I said, I have briefly, I, I've got some clients who's got five, who have got fibromyalgia and it, it, my symptoms sounded similar to theirs, but not as bad as such. Very kind of borderline with the symptoms. Um, and she said, yeah, you, you've got I think you've got this and she referred me to a local CFS clinic to have some therapy and I remember walking out to the doctors and I was just so relieved because I thought I'm not going mad like someone actually you know there might be a way out of this without me and and the recovery was hard because I, I kind of had to put in place and I was a compulsive mover I was a, you know I'm a personal trainer I always move and having that history of being overweight I was so fearful of gaining weight and fearful of other people's opinion being in the fitness industry it's very body conscious and um kind of the ego as well you know I, I'd run marathon I had, could lift heavy weights you know and then that ego I had to battle for months with that ego yeah it's tough 
Did you find yourself constantly quoting to people or trying to show, like, I would throw out these things, like, I used to run 10 kilometers every day before yeah. I went to work. Like, I felt like I constantly had to show people that I'm not lazy. Like, this yeah. isn't me. So it was like this proving that I used to be, yeah, it's, it's really bizarre. It's yeah, that, the ego awesome. there. The ego is like, I can't, I need people to know that I am not this person. <laughs> And at the moment, going well, I kind of say over the last sort of six months, because there's a little bit more to the journey, I've had to really transition and and kind of think about the person who I am. And, you know, because you do, you lose that old self as such. Um, and it might be just part of, of going older and, in your, you know, mid 30s going onwards. But yeah, so um, yeah, I got uh, referred to the, the clinic. But in the process of this happening, uh, my mum got diagnosed with stage four cancer. So, which was a month after my diagnosis, and I couldn't really, obviously, this is, I don't want to sound selfish or anything, but because I didn't want to, I was there, well, I was there caring for my mum, but I didn't really want to, I did put my recovery on the back burner because I was helping, you know, my mum through that, and, like, I had to change my work slightly um, to be with her and for, like, hospital appointments and stuff, which was brilliant because then I could be there and it's what I wanted to do so I was very fortunate I could do that around my work um so yeah that was that was uh again it's that emotional stress as you're trying to recover physically and emotionally as well and it's that whole adrenaline isn't it so even when you're sat still if you think of something stressful your your body will go into mm -hmm. that flight and mm -hmm. you just yeah just the adrenaline going through your body and then that would just make you so tired so it was yeah it's definitely interesting <laughs> interesting time um and then going when I started my actual kind of group therapy it was I felt like I actually at this point because this is when the borderline that I found you as well online and from the my own education and my own history of nutrition and my own knowledge I was going to these group sessions and I actually felt like I knew more than what they were telling us and I was just getting a bit like Oh, okay, I don't know if this is gonna help. And then COVID um after you know, as I was going through those. So yeah, and then that's when I found your your um videos because I was actually looking at exercise for ME recovery and exercise for CFS recovery because I was lost. I didn't know what to do. Mm. I would boom and bust all the time. I wouldn't understand pacing. Um and it was just yeah, I I would exercise I would clearly do too much and then spend two days in bed and I just had to get a balance which there was no education about that other than when I found your videos. I'm curious what prompted you to you know I imagine it's your background in you know in the fitness world I guess you know you know this to work to build your body up and I used to work out a lot as well so I really clung to that aspect of recovery but lots of people abandon it entirely understandably mm -hmm. because it makes you so so sick so what was it that had you thinking that okay exercise is important I need to do this even it, though it was making you feel worse yeah it is it's, I think it was just the fear of gaining weight and that ego okay. um I was going to a CrossFit gym and I absolutely loved it there absolutely I know it's just I used to train but I could feel like the pain here from my spleen and mm -hmm. I thought I can't do this so like, what if I squat and something hurt you know it's just awful but and because people can't see it externally, you look fine. But internally, mm. I was just breaking. Um, and then I remember this one day I was doing a workout and my it got to the point I would push and push and push in my workout, but my heart rate wouldn't go up. And then two hours later, I'm at high client. All of a sudden, my heart would just be booming like it should have been doing during the workout. Mm. I had like a two hour of a, oh. like delay. Um, and again, because then... Then I was panicking, it turned into a panic attack, and then uh, that didn't help my post um, malaise, you know, it's the, oh, what's it called? Post, um, what's the? Post exertional malaise. Yeah, yeah exertional, yeah. that's it. Because yeah. then I just. It's a mouthful. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and I just thought, right, I can't stop moving because it's it's ingrained in me and maybe it was the fear of the weight gain it was the fear of the, the losing who I was and the ego and I just generally like moving but it's changed a lot now to what it was before 
So obviously, thankfully, Donna, eventually you were able to turn some of this around. So how did you manage to do that? So I managed with the exercise um, to really cut back, to cut back to 10 minutes of body weight work, you know, and the yoga was just a, a real saviour for me uh, because I could still, you know what it's like with the aches and the pains. Um, and during my recovery in the summer, we actually got a hot tub and that helped because I would do my yoga either before or after I was in the hot tub because like with the hot baths, it just relaxes your muscles. Um, and yeah, I just had to do tiny snippets of movement and then just have hot baths and yeah I, I, I'll go on to supplements in a minute but the supplements kind of I tried various ones to help me through um for recovery basically um but yeah I would say the yoga and the breath work because in the process of me doing the recovery calls with the chronic fatigue clinic and doing my yoga my mum passed away in April so my yoga was like my savior. I just, you know, again, with the panic attacks, the anxiety through everything that I'd been through the last few months, that was just, yeah, my savior and walking, walking as well. It got to a point I couldn't really walk for some days, just even to the corner shop. Um, and then I would have to build up. I would do 20, 10 minute walk, then 20 minute walk, 30 minute walk. I would try a 40 minute walk, then have to go home and have a two hour sleep. <laughs> So then I'd go back to the 30 minute walk. I don't know if you guys, if you over in America go through the spoon therapy. I've heard of the, uh, uh, yes. Yeah. I'm aware of the, the spoon theory. Is that what you said? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the spoon yeah. theory. So I heard about that and I didn't know about that. And you're allowed like 12 spoons a day. Um, and when I first started, I was having like over 30 spoons a day, you know, and it's kind of, I was just like, whoa, no wonder I am. Mm feeling like I am so now I'd still do that and you've got a really good pacing video about where you put things in the jar is that right oh yeah yeah it's quite... it, uh, yeah it was my strategy for incorporating movement into my day in a manageable yeah. way so like teeny tiny chunks so like 10 teeny tiny movements a day I can link it on the video screen if anyone wants to check it out but yeah, yeah. it worked really well for me yeah, that, keeping was... it very small yeah so for people who might be watching that aren't aware of the spoon theory, can you explain what it is? So the way it was taught, sort of said to me, you, you can have um, 12 kind of units or 12 spoons as such, I have to give you the image or the theory of spoons. And um, even things like having a shower, I think are like two, two or three spoons, um, going food shopping, which I actually do my food shopping, click and collect or delivery now because you know it just saves on energy um and you learn i mean like exercise i think is about four or five um of the units even things like housework you know i'd think right right i you know it's the worst thing I'm, I'm not really great at housework i'll put it out there but one day i would tackle one room and then i would do snippets of bits i couldn't do a whole room or the whole house in one day in no way right yeah so it's uh, essentially like a, a pacing system, yeah. being aware of your limited, um, you know, stores of energy and then planning that out accordingly. Exactly. All of this knowledge and stuff that I've learned along the way has come into the COVID recovery as well, which there's a huge link now, isn't there, between COVID and ME-CFS. So it's really bringing out, you know, they're saying that long COVID could be very similar to ME-CFS because it's that post-viral kind of mm -hmm. infection isn't it mm -hmm. yeah and that was one of the reasons we talked about having this discussion today uh, is because you know you have been on this journey you did get yourself out of it you know you got to a place where you were sounds like very strong and exercising regularly and doing quite well and then you got COVID-19 which has brought you back and having to do a lot of this stuff mm -hmm. so what yeah what was what was the COVID and also yeah. I'm very sorry to hear about your mother Donna that sounds oh. devastating a loss to go through um I, yeah. Yeah, that's heartbreaking I'm really the sorry emotional stress of that with that um I was never into meditation before and I was never into restorative yoga and there was times after my mum passed that I would 
lay in my dining room and my husband thought I was just going a bit crazy but I would have like candles around me and I would do restorative yoga classes because obviously it was COVID um, you couldn't do face-to-face -face ones and um, I would be there with all of my cushions I'd have my blanket my eye mask and I would just lay and that type of therapy for the restorative yoga some sessions I would come away feeling great and there was like two sessions, I just cried for like half an hour, but I was holding all of that in my muscles. I was holding mm. it all in my body and to be able to let it out and my, my husband would come out and he'd be like, I don't think this is good for you. <laughs> and I'd be like, no, I need to let it out. Just I need to like get this tension that I'm holding my body has to come out of me. Mm. I was just let me cry. And yeah. But then some sessions I'd come away feeling really energized, you know, so you, we have to listen to our bodies don't we with and this is what it's taught me and I know we'll cover that at the end about what the whole journey's taught me but yeah just listening to how you're feeling emotionally and not just mm -hmm. physically and the crying it does kind of make you look like you're a hot mess but I actually talked about this in my book because it was a really important piece of my recovery as well not even just letting myself cry but actually forcing myself to cry sometimes you know just putting on a really sad movie or something that I knew <clears throat> excuse me something that I knew that was that was going to make me cry because I think we don't always realize all the stuff that we're holding inside and the stuff that we need to process and release so by having these sort of regular things in my life where I just was like let it out let it out yeah, <laughs> yeah it's me. it's really helpful but um going back to the COVID so in between me recovering um obviously See, you know, going through with what I went through with my mum and I've been there, you know, supportive with my dad. I think that on this journey of recovery, the COVID situation, the pandemic has changed my work dramatically. It's made me have quiet time. It has stopped me from going to the gym because that's been taken away from me. So it's massive. The, the, the forcing me to stop has helped my recovery. Um, and just sitting on the sofa and putting a series on Netflix and not feeling guilty about it has helped. Mm -hmm. And then, then I got poorly, and it's really interesting because I was like, just felt unwell, and I had muscle aches, I had the nerve pains, I had the nausea, I had the chronic fatigue, and I thought. I feel like I'm just having an ME flare up. And I was thinking, what have I done the last few days? And that lasted for two days. And I just thought, oh, I'm having a flare up. Um, and it was only, it was, I think it was about three, three to four days in that I lost my taste. And then I went for a test because I went on the NHS website and I hadn't lost my taste at that point. I didn't have a temperature and I didn't have a cough. I just mm -hmm. had the kind of ME symptoms. So I just, didn't really think I did like I say think it was COVID because I googled it and went online um to see if I could get a test and I couldn't until three days in when I'd, I'd lost my taste and um, and then the muscle aches went um and then the taste unfortunately lasted five weeks I had no taste or smell for five weeks it was awful wow <laughs> yeah and I can't complain too much because wow. there's a lot of people out there that are, are worse off but um yeah um and then every two days, the symptoms would just change with COVID. And again, you're forced to stay at home. So I had to mm. rest, which is something I didn't do when I had glandular fever. Mm. So, yeah, just I would get up, pot around the house um, and then go sleep on the sofa. Very, very similar to the the kind of Emmy stuff that you go through at, at the beginning. So... I had to have a think about this and I thought, right, let's go back to my toolbox. Um, I went back over some few notes. I watched a couple of, um, you know, videos just to refresh my memory um, of everything. Because, you you know, you said it in the past, you? you kind of forget how bad it is when you have recovered. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, with the COVID recovery, I just had to tap into all of the small therapy stuff that I've learned along the way on my CFS recovery. Um, and just rest when you need to have a nap when you need to and your nutrition as well and again the supplements really kind of helped me recover 
and I've helped my dad recover because my dad unfortunately got COVID as well um, and I've been telling him what to do uh, through, through it and he's he's you know he's 74 and well 73 sorry not 74 just yet um, and <laughs> yeah so I'm glad he's recovered as well. Yeah that's great to hear I'm wondering what that was like for you you know mentally or emotionally because I always wonder if I somehow had to face this again like I always think I don't know if I could like I just don't know if I could pull myself out of this a second time I'm sure I'd find it within me somewhere but just having gone through it once is already a nightmare so what was it like like where were you at where, where was your head at through all of this? Yeah I, I think because of how I knew I had kind of got through it in the past I just didn't I mean I'm two months on now from having it approximately okay. yeah about two months and um I, I still have to pace because you still got that unknowing haven't you you know I think oh if I push too much is it gonna be that boom and bust again so mm. I'm still pacing um I'm only doing my my own exercise twice a week at the moment just some you know just to get the the sort of muscle um, memory and just keep the body ticking over still doing my stretches most days but and and I'm getting out walking because nature I think I commented on your run of your um Instagram posts about nature yeah. out and I recently watched the sleep um video that you done um recently and and that uh, was like, I was just like, oh my God, I do exactly the same. And I'm the same as you. I was like, yep, yeah, I do that, do that, do that. So yeah, that was really, <laughs> really helpful. And going out walking in the morning has definitely helped my sleep. <laughs> it's a game changer, isn't it? I yeah. could not believe how much that helped me. It sounds too simple, but it really, for me, was massive. Yeah, yeah, it's just don't realize how off our circadian rhythms are and we're not outside in nature and like we're just we're all messed up and our hormones are being fired at the wrong time. So just like getting out, getting some sunshine and kind of like connecting with the earth. I'm like out there hugging trees and put my toes in the grass. I look a little bit crazy, but I'm like whatever, <laughs> I'm going to sleep good tonight. <laughs> yeah, and it's worth it because sleep is just um, a huge benefit of recovery um gut health as well I am completely you know in tune with gut health because they get it's our second brain so and dealing with IBS and anxiety if you don't heal your gut and look after what's going into your gut then you're it's like a two-way motorway isn't it two-way sort of system mm -hmm. between them so yeah gut health sleep the the stretching and mobility I still do because it makes me feel good um and the, the supplements i do have magnesium mm -hmm. um vitamin d especially at the time at the moment where uh, it's a bit darker here in the uk um and i take a supplement for my gut health in the mornings as well okay yeah those are the two things i've been curious about that you've been mentioning is the supplements that have helped you i know it's very individual so it doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's going to help anybody else but it's always interesting to hear and then the gut health piece of it because that was huge for me and it seems to be huge for a lot of people so what what sorts of things did you find that helped helped you with your gut health um hydration and yeah. on the hydration thing alcohol as well i don't really mm -hmm. drink a lot if i drink if i do drink alcohol it affects my sleep and then I pay for it for two days after. Um, mm -hmm. And I get heart palpitations as well if I drink, which is, um, I don't know if it's like the sugars or, or something, but yeah, I just, it doesn't sit well. I can have, I can tolerate like a small bit of alcohol. And it, again, it affects your gut as well, but mm -hmm. I can't drink like I used to in my twenties, no way. <laughs> um, and I, I have minimal dairy. Um, I don't have much cow's milk at all. Uh, with gluten I did cut out gluten for a very very long time and I can tolerate a little bit and I'm absolutely fine with it that helps like, with my gut and I know if I've had too much eating fibrous vegetables having pulses mm -hmm. as well um, my diet is very much kind of wholesome but I do allow myself to have like the I, I go by like an 80 20 split and if I want a little treat then I will have it especially going through mm -hmm. my life of being on a restrictive weight loss journey yeah you know, and, then, and again this sounds really this this year with my mum passing it's made it makes you realize how much you need to value your body and 
you can go through your life on a weight loss journey aspiring to be smaller but what's it for I mean I watched my mum lose weight and um, it wasn't for a good reason it was unintentional due to her illness and I think that's had a huge trigger in me because I, I'm no longer really focused on weight loss it's more about health it's more about well-being mm-hmm. you've been living through covid right now the pandemic you know the last thing you want to do is just do something because of the way you look and that's mm-hmm. just from my experience of being someone larger going through what i've gone through reaching burnout on the aspiration of being in a set of smaller body and then watching my mum go through what she went through and what, what i've been through and then i get covid mm-hmm. you know and you think you've really got to tune into your health you you know we take yeah, it for yeah. we really do and simple things like the nutrition the gut health the hydration the sleep a just majority of it is doesn't cost a lot um mm-hmm. you know and as long as you you know and you want to do it for health reasons you can make changes yeah in a, in a healthy way and not how we've done it in the past and done it the unhealthy way you learn from your mistakes don't you mm-hmm. yeah I think being healthy at least in my experience and recovery it's a lot of yeah most of what I did didn't really cost any money at all and it wasn't exciting or glamorous or sexy yeah <laughs> but it was just I, I liken it a lot to going to the gym you know like when you want to get in shape and you want to build muscle there's only one way to do it you just keep showing up and you just keep doing the reps day after day after day and that's what recovery was for me it was just doing the reps not the gym reps well a little Mm -hmm. bit but just the whatever those pieces were for me you know for me it was things like intermittent fasting and eating fermented foods and getting enough sleep and doing some meditation and managing my stress and you know eating the right kind of diet and you know and so forth but yeah it's just day after day after day keep doing the reps and it can feel you know like you're a bit lost sometimes because in the moment you can't really see if you're getting anywhere but it really is it's like at least for me just like a slow you know climb out of it yeah and sounds like it was for you as well if you were to say that to someone you know we we do our our walks in sunshine for half an hour we make Mm -hmm. sure we're going to bed at a regular time you know at least six nights a week um Mm -hmm. and we're not having the caffeine after a certain time in the day Mm -hmm. we are having the hydration we're being kind of aware of the nutritional value of our food and when you list this and then put meditation on top of it as well um to the to someone that could be like oh my god how do you fit all that in how do you do it that seems like hard work but it's not it's just a way of lifestyle and if we didn't do it we probably wouldn't have recovered how how we have and when you do it day after day after day it becomes habit and it becomes part of your routine mm-hmm. and then you know I, I think we learn to kind of habit stack things so you know yes I do earthing almost every day I get sun every single day I go for walks every single day but they all happen at the same time it's yeah. like <laughs> I'm doing it all at once and it's every morning at a specific time and I don't even think about it you know I know it's that time and I've got to go so, yeah. yeah yeah definitely and I mean, I just being my, my job now, um, I was just like, you know, the, the PT before and going through all of this journey, like I say, it changes and you, you have to change along the way. So I kind of felt like I lost my identity a little bit. Um, but then you get a new identity. And mm-hmm. this week I have coached three people, three of my clients who I now see on Zoom through their own COVID recovery. So they've actually had COVID and I'm doing the mobility work with them. We're doing, you know, no real cardio or anything like that. Breath work, stretching, a small bit of body weight work because I've been there. I know how it feels, you know, Mm. to not only go through the ME, but to on that COVID journey, journey as well. Yeah, you earned yourself a PhD, I think, in this whole <laughs> this whole topic area. <laughs> and also another thing that I do as well with a lot of my clients, that the, one of the first within the first few minutes of being with them um, or seeing them on Zoom, I'm like, "How's your sleep? How's you know? How's your um? You not? I don't never say diet because I I don't really encourage sort of diets or fad diets. But I'm like, "How's your nutrition? How's your hydration been?" And another huge thing for me in the last six months has been hormonal levels and exercising around your hormonal cycle and mm-hmm. when to rest around your hormonal cycle and when to actually do your movement 
Um, and I think growing up in the fitness industry and probably the sales industry as well, and just, just the way the world is, we're kind of expected to function like a man and be on yeah. the go 24 hours a day. And that uh, I think it's like the man cycle is 24 hours, whereas the woman's cycle is 28 days. So what we go through in 28 days, the bloke goes through in, in 24 hours. So we, you know, there are weeks that we might not be able to perform that well at work. And there are weeks that we might not be able to go and run the marathon or lift the heavy weights. But there are the weeks you can have a little bit of time out, do your restorative work, do a bit of planning, a bit of journaling, and then you're going to mm-hmm. smash it on the other week. So that's been a huge eye opener for me. And I'm, I'm doing a lot of more work on women's health now and lifestyle around the hormonal cycle. That is so important and something that I very rarely hear talked about. I remember reading recently <laughs> oh, about some crazy study that was done. It was, it was on something like, I don't know, something to do with, I almost want to say ovarian cancers. It's something very female. And mm. the test group was all men. I mean, this was years ago, but yeah. it's just, it just seems like a lot of the medical community was just like a man, like a, we, we study a man and then we just apply it to women. Like it's all the same. Yeah. Hundred percent, and that's like it with a lot of studies, isn't it? As well, a lot of studies yeah. they use, use men, um, and with sports studies and nutrition studies, it's very much focused on testing and trialing on on men. But we are so so different, and I mean, mm. especially I mean, I'm I'm 36 this year, so getting sort of a bit older as well. I'm thinking, oh, actually, it, it really makes sense, and I know now that if, you know, I know the weeks that I'm not going to have the energy. So mm-hmm. I, I schedule in walks, I schedule in restorative yoga, and it's, it's mm-hmm. literally like clockwork. Now I'm aware of it, it is like clockwork. And I help my clients or starting, you know, starting to ask them, what week are you on? Let's do this exercise for this week, you know, and it works. Mm-hmm. And yeah, especially for weight loss as well. It's, you know, some people try so hard and push themselves so hard for weight loss, but into, everyone is so different. We, we're unique in our bodies and going through this whole journey, you just have to listen to your body and I've ignored it a lot and I'm just starting to listen now. Yeah, no, that that all makes a lot of sense. And the whole time you're talking, I was thinking about something I read recently that was saying that of all the diseases and health conditions that are out there, you know, researchers are estimating that about 95% of them are coming from environmental conditions and only about 5% are coming from genetics. You know, it's um, our genetics are not our, our destiny. And it sounds like your whole recovery approach from ME and both from COVID has been very much lifestyle medicine stuff. And it's something that I don't think gets enough credibility in, in the uh, recovery world because it doesn't sound, I don't know, impressive enough. Um, so it's just, I, I love hearing these stories. It just, I think it drives home that at least for some of us, these lifestyle medicine factors are huge, huge in getting, yeah. in getting your health back. Really are. And if someone had told me 10 years ago, um, rest more you know do less and eat more yeah. I would have been get like, some sun no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now I've been like no 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 because being in the industry and the, the sort of how I've grown up it's always been like do more eat less but now I'm yeah. doing less and eating more and I've not really yeah. gained weight I think not going to the gym and lifting heavy weights I've probably lost muscle mass but yeah. I, I'm mentally and my ME is a lot better and I've got a I I like the phrase that um I'm more than my body so Mm. you know I've got a lot more to offer to the world than Mm -hmm. how I look really yeah 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 that's such an important message these days for sure and one of the things I found too because you know I had a lot of insecurities in my youth and I my behavior was very motivated around how I looked and just trying to be a certain way and then when I got sick I finally had to just put that aside. I'm like, okay, I, I cannot even afford to play into my vanity anymore. I just have to take care of myself. And the interesting thing was, is that when I finally put that aside, is when I, I finally started to look better. You know? <laughs> like, because my nutrition got in order, my exercise was a healthier, more balanced approach, and there was less stress around it all. So it, it's interesting that kind of a silver lining, I think, can be that even when you put all that aside, your reward is that, you know, if you're being healthy, if you're treating your body well, your mind and your body well, that it's going to express itself physically too. So, yeah, definitely. And I think it, you, I've like evolved with my, well, my clients have evolved with me, or I've evolved with my current clients. That 
they they need the time for themselves you know a, a lot of people are still working from home um doing busy jobs they've got kids at home they're stressed out and I see it in, in some of my clients I'm like you're burning yourself out you know let's let's look at your lifestyle habits rather than just weight loss you know and just getting mm-hmm. the nutrition in your body cutting down the alcohol I give my clients you know only drink two nights a week rather than four <laughs> you know mm-hmm. because I don't like to cut things out completely but you know it's yeah so- yeah, and I think you have to work with people where you are. If you make it so grand, you know, that it's impossible to follow, then people will just throw their hands up and be like, I can't do this. It's too hard. See, I mean, you got to just yeah. make it realistic. So when and how did you end up starting? So uh, you are doing, is it um, health coaching now? Or tell us a little bit about yeah, what that so is. Yeah, I'm more of a, 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 like, health and wellbeing personal trainer, really. Um, it's got, going down that whole, like, holistic approach of, how you treat your body, how you're feeling. Mm. And I like to train people, not just how they look, but what they can do with their body. And, you know, not even, well, kind of like restorative exercise, really. And I just ask, mm. how, are you, how are you feeling today? And, mm-hmm. you know, if they're like, oh, I've got loads of energy, I'm like, great, brilliant. Let's do the squats, let's do the lunges. Let's get that heart rate going. Let's build some muscle mass. And then then we do the stretching and mobility at the end. And then there's other days they say, look, Don, I just want to do a little bit of yoga fitness you know, and some body weight work and some slow paced, you know, core work. And mm. yeah, so it's, it, I still am really in tune with the movement due to the, what's happened the last sort of year, I have cut out all my massaging, um, my, cause I used to be a sports massage therapist and that used to just mm-hmm. out. Um, and I started to tailor off of it on my recovery, but now I'm like, no, I, I can't cause of COVID, which is a shame, but you know, and everything I've learned on my sports massage, I now put that, you know, the the anatomy and everything and, and about the body with my personal training, with my nutrition coaching. I'm just helping people appreciate what their body can do. Yeah. OK, so it sounds like you're still on the same career path that you were. You've just taken your experiences and everything that you've learned to Definitely. sort of shape your approach. OK, yeah. excellent. Yeah. And I think my clients well, are thankful for it as well. They're, they're just like, that's their path yeah. they've gone on. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's really great and really valuable. And I'm thinking about, again, something that I, I wrote in my book. I'm all about the shameless book plugs today, it seems. But uh, I, I put in the section on my experience with exercise, you know, my recommendations were to stay away from fitness trainers. <laughs> Because I think a lot of that world is push, 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 push. Like your job is to have your mind override your body and get out, you know, one more rep, one more set, whatever it is. So it's really great that you mm, know, to see that definitely. you're out there providing this kind of support for people. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Donna, for sharing all of this. This has been really interesting to hear. And it, yeah, it's amazing how much a lot of it parallels my own experience. Uh, I think just kind of as we wrap up, it would be great to hear, you know, what have you taken away from all this? Or what would you go back and tell yourself? I always love hearing this from people if you could go back in time. Yeah. And I, I love this question because I never like to regret the journey because mm-hmm. the journey's got you to where you are now and it's given you all of these kind of life skills really and I will never underrate rest again <laughs> um and you you know everything leads you to the path you're meant to be on and yeah I I just just like what I've said already just appreciate what your body can do for you and that it is strong and just fuel it with the goodness and keep moving in a smart way and listen just listen to your body and what it's telling you really yeah I think that's bang on and I I shared a quote recently I have a a Facebook group um, I can't remember if you're in it but for people who are recovering from chronic fatigue syndrome and I put a post it was a quote from someone that said rest is productivity I was thinking for all those productivity addicts out there like to frame Mm -hmm. it that way even now today I still have to remind myself you know rest is productivity this is important this is keeping everything else in place I think some of us are just wired that way or we're just been conditioned to go 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 so that's a lifelong thing you know I'll be doing good and then I'll have some kind of relapses where I see myself pushing too hard and I have to get back and check yeah (sighs) well if if people want to see more of your journey or if they want to connect with you about some of, you know, the, the services that you do for people, where can they find you? Well, I've created a little five day movement challenge, I called it. And, mm-hmm. 
It's only 20 minute little exercise videos. It's free. Um, I can send you the, the link over if you want me to. And it's um, just like mobility work, a little bit of core strengthening. I've got some yoga fitness. There is a, a hit workout in there because it's kind of aimed at all different levels of fitness really. And then a stretch right. workout. So they're only like 20 minute, 15, 20 minute videos. Um, just so people can see how I coach, because like what you've just said a moment ago, Pete, there were so many personal trainers that are so different. And I'm mm -hmm. not the type of one who will, will push, push, push till you actually burn out. I'm the one who, that wants okay. you to move every day and not ache so you can't get up the stairs, you know. <laughs> and um, I've also got like a little um, replenish and refresh membership as well, which is mainly kind of the, it's a, a, a follow on from my five day movement challenge. So you can kind of see what you're you're going to go in for. And again, it's not all out completely hard exercise there is a lot of stretching mm -hmm. and breath work and mobility work in my membership um and um i'm not i mean i'm not taking on any one-to-one -one clients at the moment um but i've got a little lifting program coming out because some people might not really want the kind of the that side of things so my other side mm -hmm. is like the lifting stuff that is mainly for beginners it's mainly for anyone who is recovering from an injury anyone who's got to the stage of, like we're at now on our journey of CFS mm -hmm. and it's what I actually still do now and it's 25 minute with hand weights or a barbell and basic exercise to build muscle and to strengthen but there's no real cardio in there it's all just the the strengthening of the muscles to stay strong Great. That's excellent. Yeah. I'll link all of that in the video description if people yeah. want to check it out. And then are you on Instagram or is there any place that people can follow you, follow you or yeah, find so you? I'm over on Instagram. I'm Donna Health and Wellbeing PT. It's Donna little, little underscore Health and Wellbeing PT and Donna Pavitt at um, Donna Pavitt Health and Wellbeing on Facebook as well. And that's okay. P-A-V-I-T-T. -T. I'm, I'm quite new to the YouTube world. So I haven't got a lot on YouTube. I've got about two, I think, three short videos about my MECFS um, journey. So yeah, my YouTube, and I'm thinking about doing some podcasts. That that might be my next uh, venture, going and do some podcasts. Excellent, amazing. That's really great. Yeah, I'll have this all in the video description so people can check it out. Good for you. Yeah, you definitely have a lot to offer, and you know, a lot of people that I'm sure that would appreciate. You know, benefiting from your experience and what you've learned so yeah that's that's really wonderful and I think that's that just like thank you for you sharing your journey as well because like I say with the therapy that I had here in the UK it was you know it was okay but it was wasn't what you kind of fed back to when I was watching as well you know so yeah thank you for putting and starting up your channel <laughs> oh yeah it's absolutely my pleasure I, I definitely enjoy it um, so yeah, thank you so much for doing this. A million thanks. I know this is, you know, a big chunk of your time and your day. And I, I, I just really, really appreciate it. And I know that a lot of other people will appreciate it as well. So thanks, Donna. Thank you. <laughs> And thank you to everyone watching. I know that these interviews get a bit long and it is challenging for people who are facing health issues. I get that. I, now I always timestamp them. So hopefully you can jump around if you just want to go to the points that interest you. And I'm curious lately how many people actually do make it to the end. So if you're watching and you're still watching, throw like a tree emoji or something in the comments and we'll see how many people actually, actually are getting to the end of these things. And if you are still watching and you think you have, um, or not you think, you have a recovery story that um, you would like to share. Maybe you've been through this and you've recovered as well, or there's something unique about your journey that you think other people would benefit from hearing about. Just, just reach out to me. My contact details are in the video description. I would love to hear from you. So yeah, that's it for today. Thanks again, Donna. Thank you everyone watching. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up and whatever you're facing, I hope you're doing well. Keep at it. Uh, you will get there. Take care everyone.